What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. In today's episode, I'm going to be showing you a super cool, very effective, all natural pest control method using rhubarb leaves. That's right, the thing that everybody wants to know, what, can, uh, what rhubarb leaves can be used for uh, because you can't eat them. And so uh, usually they're just composted or used as like a natural mulch, which is very effective. But in today's episode, I'm gonna show you a little known method to actually controlling pests using the oxalic acid found in these rhubarb leaves. Let's go. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna get are some rhubarb leaves. Now, rhubarb leaves are really effective at controlling pests because of their oxalic acid. Now, if you've ever heard of oxalic acid before, generally it's associated with something like kidney stones. So if you're someone who's prone to kidney stones, you more than likely know foods to avoid because of the fact that uh, you should not eat things like spinach or kale, a lot of cruciferous vegetables, but also something like red bean sorrel. Um, you need to make sure that you don't eat a lot of it because it can actually cause kidney stones. Now, uh, very similarly to cruciferous vegetables and red bean sorrel and stuff, you have rhubarb. And rhubarb is incredibly high in oxalic acid, which is a naturally occurring compound that actually will completely shut down the, digest the digestive system of insects when it becomes, uh, when it gets consumed. And so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be spraying down our crops with essentially a rhubarb extract. And it's a free thing that you can be doing to really incredibly uh, control a lot of your insects. Now, not all of the insects are gonna be controlled by this. Things like aphids, white flies, spider mites are affected by oxalic acid, but something like say Japanese beetles or flea beetles uh, are totally unaffected. So um, it's not gonna control everything, um, also things like ants, a lot of your hard shelled insects are not affected by oxalic acid. It simply just beads off and runs off. But when it comes to your soft bodied insects, they are incredibly affected by oxalic acid. And the nice thing is, is rhubarb, uh, rhubarb leaves have the highest concentration of oxalic acid of almost anything in the garden. So it's not only a free resource, something that really nobody ever knows what to do with, but it's also a great pest control. So let's head on inside, let's throw these into a blender, blend them up, strain them, and get that oxalic acid out of these leaves. Okay. All right, so we just got in from the kitchen. We have here our uh, Oster blender. Uh, <laughs> wasn't working out the best, but we did eventually get a really good chop on this. Um, you know, obviously the finer the better because what we want to do is we want to release all those oxalic crystals, uh, those oxalic acid crystals into the water. And then we're going to just use this little wicker stand because um, I couldn't find a, uh, a like some cheesecloth would work great, obviously. But um, don't tell Mrs. and my gardener. We're going to commandeer this because it has some holes in it and that will work. Uh, so all we're going to do is we're just going to take this and dump it through. Um, I'll wash it, don't worry. <laughs> um, and basically, I mean, we got a really good, a really good, uh, yeah, got a really good filter going here. So um, now, obviously, all of this is kind of wasted material. Had we gotten a better blend on it, it would have been far better. But we have, as you, obviously, as you can see, a really good, deep, rich green color there. And that is what we're looking for. So now all we're going to do is we're going to dilute this one part water to one part kind of oxalic acid rhubarb slurry. All right, so now all we're going to do is we're just going to take our oxalic acid rhubarb slurry and dump it into a pump sprayer. Now, a lot of you are probably wondering, well, just how potent is this spray gonna be? I mean, it's just leaves after all. And the answer is very, very potent. In fact, so potent that that's why we had to dilute it in water because um, in about three ounces of rhubarb leaves, you're gonna have roughly almost 2000 milligrams of oxalic acid. Now, oxalic acid is actually kind of a crystalline structure. So when you blend it up, it actually just, it doesn't really dissolve in the water. It, um, it more or less, uh, well, it does dissolve in the water, but it doesn't 
really uh, break down, right? It's still oxalic acid in its oxalic acid form. And so by blending it, you're basically taking it from the leaves and you're pulling it out of the leaves and you're extracting it into the water, very, very simply. Now, the really nice thing is the fact that you can do this slowly as well. You can actually take rhubarb leaves, set them in a bucket of water and just let them slow steep. And by breaking them down um, anaerobically, like you would like a like a steeped or like a like a steeped weed tea, something like that, it will be very, very smelly, but that will slowly leach the oxalic acid out into the water. You'll still have the oxalic acid found in the water, it won't oxidize, it won't deplete, it'll still stay there, and you can do that very slowly as well. But this is a very fast way to basically uh, masticate the leaves and uh, extract the oxalic acid. So uh, what we're gonna do is simply throw the lid on and we're going to spray our plants. Now, the nice thing with oxalic acid is it is naturally derived. So you can find it found in a lab, but you can also obviously get it from rhubarb leaves. So it's not gonna be, it's not gonna really burn any, uh, it won't burn your plants, it won't cause any harm to the leaves, it only causes harm to the bugs that ingest it. So it's really great, it allows you to apply it in you know basically any time of the day. I prefer not to do during the heat of the day, obviously, out of just a general practice. It's never good to spray anything during the heat of the day, but it's not like you're spraying a baking soda solution, which can be very, very acidic, or very alkaline, I should say, uh, very alkaline. It's not like you're spraying, um, you know, whatever, like apple cider vinegar. You can kill weeds with apple cider vinegar just from the weeds and the sun, or from the acid in the sun. But oxalic acid, it's a little bit different. So we're gonna simply spray our plants down here and hopefully control some of these pests we're having. Now all we're gonna do is simply drench the leaves. If you had aphids, make sure you get the undersides of the leaves. Really drench that plant and coat those insects. When they start to consume the, uh, the leaf or they get drenched in the oxalic acid, inevitably they're going to, uh, they're going to well, they're gonna die. <laughs> Very quickly, in fact. All right, so one of the last things that I wanna talk about here is just a general caution. Obviously, oxalic acid uh, can be ingested, but in very, very high quantities, it can be dangerous. And so, uh, though it is completely organic, obviously you saw there's no magic tricks here. We took, uh, we took a rhubarb leaf, blended it up, diluted it in some water, and we're spraying our plants with it. It still can be something that you do not want to, uh, to ingest, especially if you have a hypersensitivity to oxalic acid or oxalate. And so, it's very, very important to wash your produce after the fact. Um, once you harvest your produce, as you should be anyways, even if you're growing organically, give them a rinse off. Just a good general practice that's gonna rinse off any remaining you know, oxalate from the, uh, from the solution that you're spraying on your plants, um, especially plants that, uh, you know, that you're eating fresh, like um, let's say it's like leafy greens, right? Though the oxalate will really stick to those very readily. The leaves uh, can absorb that, that oxalate onto the surface of the leaf. So by rinsing it off, um, it's gonna be very safe. Something like a tomato, a lot of the oxalate and stuff is gonna kind of just dribble right off of it. So still obviously give it a wash, but as a general practice, I just wanna let you guys know about that because oftentimes we see organic sprays as like, oh, they're so harmless, they're so cute, they're organic, but not in the case of an oxalate spray. So um, yeah, so that's it's really that simple. I know a lot of you have been wanting to know what to do with your rhubarb leaves, and now you know. I'd highly recommend making up this spray Spraying everything down. We're spraying our garlic down. We're spraying our peas down. We're gonna spray our kale and our, our brassicas down. We're gonna spray our spinach down. We're gonna spray our tomatoes down because we're having some super hot weather. We're definitely starting to encounter some pests. And uh, when your plants get stressed and the season's really hot and dry, your plants get stressed and pests take advantage of that. So we're fighting back with some rhubarb extract. All right, take care guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to throw a thumbs up there. Subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know in the comments box down below if you've ever heard of this trick, if you've ever tried it, and the results you've had with it. All right, take care guys. Grow big or go home. Bye.